Now, the Russian invasion on Ukraine has left the country in ruins. Houses have been burned, commercial establishments have been destroyed. The horrifying visuals here that you see in your screens have emerged from many of those combat zones that shows the earlier images where we saw the city fully flourished and now large-scale devastation, devastation there, extensive damage that we see in those cities. The city of Mariupol has suffered significant damage to this urban That's infrastructure. Indeed. The before and after images showing destruction that have been caused by Russian troops, residential buildings, commercial establishments have been destroyed after back-to-back -back strikes. <laughs> Another city that has been one of the worst hit is Chernihiv. After deadly attacks hit the city over the last 22 days, the streets of the city now filled with dead bodies. Horrifying images of locals carrying the injured and dead have surfaced that show a fatal aftermath of these attacks. And now a town in Donetsk region, Makikwa is now in complete ruins, residential buildings, market areas charred due to repeated shelling by Russian army. Locals can be seen working together to repair the damage caused by brutal Russian attacks. In Mariupol, a drama theater became shelter for thousands of Ukrainians in that city, but Russians have bombed that theater with people inside. Every single person taking refuge inside that hospital was trapped under debris. No count of the number of casualties has taken place due to the bombings. A confirmation is yet awaited. The visuals on your screens here is that of the theater before the war and that destruction now really showing the intensity of these attacks. Now let me quickly cut across to our panelists joining us, Maria, also Rostislav, thank you very much, appreciate your time. Maria, if you can give us an understanding into these diplomatic talks that are currently underway with both the countries now looking at a compromise after 22 days of relentless bombarding. Uh, do you ex what do you expect from these talks and do you see Ukraine coming to a compromise and stepping down from some of your key demands? Uh, I'm sure, hello, good morning, uh, I'm sure the compromise is Russia to withdraw their uh, heavy um, weapon, to withdraw their Russian troops, to get out from our land, to get out from our country. This is such a compromise. Uh, and uh, uh, all that 15 points which you have named, these points are, are from Russia's side. We demand, to, uh, see, we demand ceasefire. We demand Russian troops la leave our territory. Uh, as you have mentioned, Mariupol, uh, the sign on the theater, uh, the, the signs were children, because more than 1,500 people and children were in uh, this uh, dramatic theater uh, in their shelters. So Putin, he is a neo-Nazi uh, leader who is killing our children, our women, and our uh, elder people. And he's a war criminal, and that is why no compromise. Uh, his place in international court uh, and all his uh, military uh, people also. That is why regarding neutral status, no neutral status for Ukraine. It's capitulation. Uh, we have already in our constitution, Euro Atlantic integration, and uh, our people, our nation now are dying to be democratic, to be European, to be uh, transparent and to be in uh, NATO. As uh, uh, that is a security for the whole region. That is why I see also how um, your probably rhetoric also on your uh, channel is changing. And I thank you that you see this tragic and you see this reality, what is going on in 21st century. Mariupol now, it's an example what Putin would like to provide with the whole Ukraine. Right. And that is why we are calling for the whole world to stop Putin, to isolate him, 
More sanctions. Right. More you know, sanctions on Putin. A, a sanctions, stiff sanctions have been imposed on Putin, but doesn't seem like it's deterred Russia from sending its troops in numbers. They now in, have encircled the capital city of Kiev, while on the other hand, they're trying to hold talks and come to a, a compromise. Uh, Rostislav, who's also joining us from Kiev, uh, would you be able to tell us if all that help that's coming in from the Western countries in terms of aid, uh, military aid for you, and the kind of money that's been pumped in by the United States so far, is that enough help or are you requesting and appealing for more uh, in this trying time for you? Well, uh, for, uh, good afternoon for all. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the city of Kiev is not encircled. Uh, Ukrainian army is uh, holding the invaders off uh, the western and eastern outskirts of the city. And uh, it is uh, uh, still uh, not uh, in the encirclement and uh, hopefully it will not be. Because we see what happens uh, next uh, stage. Uh, Mariupol uh, is a perfect example when the Russian army uh, gets close enough to use artillery, uh, to use rocket launchers, uh, it uh, starts to erase uh, the city. We saw it in Kharkiv also. We see it in Chernigiv, in Sumy. Uh, so it is vital to hold them off. And uh, for this uh, uh, actual result, uh, we need all, all the assistance. So we are thankful to the partners for everything that is uh, coming to help Ukraine. And uh, we ask uh, for a sort of a land lease, as we saw in the Second World War, uh, when the nations of the free world uh, helped uh, the nations incumbent, uh, the uh, Great Britain, uh, the Soviet Union at those times, uh, and others who were fighting the Nazis. And as my colleague rightfully says, uh, uh, Putin is a, a neo-Nazist now because he is using the very same methods and very uh, same uh, kind of war. Uh, he is attacking civilians, uh, he is uh, bar bombarding shelters, uh, he is uh, uh, cutting off humanitarian convoys, uh, and uh, he should be stopped by the same means as Hitler was stopped uh, 80 years ago. Right. We also have uh, Oleksiy, who's joining us, an MP from Kiev. Oleksiy, we know that in Mariupol, there's been constant uh, bombing and a theater that was housing close to a thousand or more civilians. We're using that as shelter has now been fully targeted at. Uh, we are not certain on the number of casualties. Would you be able to elaborate on what happened there? Hello, my name is Oleksiy Goncherenko uh, and a uh, member of the parliament. I'm now in Odessa. And I say hello to Rostislav, my colleague, uh, Rostislav Pavlenko. And speaking about Mariupol, that's absolutely horrific situation which happens there. And uh, Putin is just uh, destroying half million population city. The number of casualties is in thousands. And it's uh, just a terror. Yesterday, big theater in which people were hiding from bombing. And uh, all around where it was written that children are inside. So it was seen also from air, but Russians, uh, nevertheless, they bombed it. And we have again, again, many, many casualties. We even don't know the number because the rubles is still in the place. And because there are fightings in the city, the rescue teams just could not, could not uh, to oh, clean these uh, rubles. So that's the situation in Ukraine. That's the horror which is going on. And I'm sorry that Indian government uh, didn't vote uh, for in favor of resolution uh, against this war in the United Nations. I can't understand why this war is against humanity. This war uh, is seeing large-scale humanitarian crisis unfold uh, in modern world. This, this kind of devastation that we see where civilians are bearing the brunt is really heartbreaking. Uh, Maria, over to you on uh, th the kind of stories that you're hearing. We know that many, many Ukrainians have managed to flee. They, uh, many more have stayed back. Uh, but at a time like this, uh, what would be your appeal to those citizens to stay or to leave? With this kind of constant shelling, what would be your responsibility as an administration? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I'd like to add some information regarding Mariupol, which my colleagues also has mentioned, regarding humanitarian green corridors. Yesterday, uh, it was agreed that um, by private cars, uh, the inhabitants of Mariupol can leave. But um, again, Russian troops, uh, they uh, uh, shooted, there were shells from Grad to these civilian cars. 
where of course the majority are children and uh, children and uh, women and so that's a terror by uh, Putin uh, again we we here are not able by ourselves to stop him and that is why uh, I, I I mentioned it previously in previous our meetings but really uh, Indian government also has to be strong and brave in their position regarding evacuation. 18 million people are suffering from the war. It's UN numbers. 8 million people became IDPs in Ukraine. And uh, almost um, 3,500,000 people left Ukraine. Of course, it's women and children. But it depends uh, also on the democratic and civilian world, free world, how many people, how many civilians have to leave our country because there is no safe place what to hide uh, from attacks, from bombing, from the biggest bombs from Russian Federation. And that is why it's also a question to you, what, we, what you can do to help our people to stay in Ukraine. Because as you know, even after invasion and annexation of Crimea in 2014, our people, which Europeans and other countries were so worried, they didn't became any refugee crisis, any immigration crisis. We were all in our country. We were all fighting for our independence and our prosperity. That is why I also would like to ask the whole free world, how many people have to leave more our country that you pay attention and help us with the land lease, with the weapon, with our theory system. And, uh, uh, you know, this is a humanitarian aid or from these countries. Thank you. Oh, Maria, we see a large-scale international outrage, the kind of sanctions that have been imposed on Russia. Uh, one hoped that it would deter their uh, spirit or their attempts to uh, invade Ukraine and in such a manner. But unfortunately, it seems like they're, they've stepped up attack. There ha has been no signs of de-escalation so far. Uh, if I can take that to uh, Oleski, uh, please give us an understanding of the kind of talks between the two countries. We know that uh, Ukraine now has finally decided to come to a compromise, isn't insisting anymore of becoming a NATO member. But for civilians and for all of you, is it really important at this moment to decide on being a NATO member or not? Does it even matter considering NATO hasn't uh, stepped in to the extent that y'all expected for? Uh, first of all, about sanctions. Yes, the sanctions are imposed, but no one sanctions from Indian government, as I know. I don't know any sanction from Indian government. And I think it's not right when such things are happening. And India also knows what, how brutal can be dictatorships and how dangerous they can be. So I believe that India should also join free world here. Uh, speaking about uh, compromises and peace negotiations, I don't believe in these peace negotiations, unfortunately, for the moment. Because Putin, as any aggressor, understands only force. And before his losses will be so terrible that he could not continue his attack in any way, I think he will not uh, join any real peace negotiations. Speaking about NATO, it's absolutely a fake story. Putin started the war against Ukraine in 2014 when Ukraine was absolutely neutral country without no intention to join NATO. And it has not stopped Putin. It had not stopped Putin at all. Today, the new invasion started and we are not member of NATO again. So, and we are not even candidates to, to be a member of NATO. We don't even have membership action plan or things like this. So Putin is not go, trying to uh, defend uh, Russia from Ukraine being member of NATO. He's trying to destroy Ukraine. That's what he's trying to do. So all these stories about NATO and that will change something, that will not change anything. Uh, it's a fake story. Right. You know, I we hear you and India today has been uh, extensively capturing all that that's unfolding from Ukraine. We're, we're bringing voices from Ukraine. Uh, it's for the world to see. Thank you very much. We really, prayers are with you, you. The civilians of Ukraine. We're really fighting and resisting Russia's offensive. Maria Oleksky and Rostislav, really appreciate your time.